and I'll I'll know. Okay, so it says it says live online. online. Huh? It says live online. Yeah, it's live. Okay, just give me introduce yourself while I get to Hi guys, it's uh RZ Jones eighteen of the RZ Jones eighteen three exclamation point channel. Um we are I had to they, they, they want a last name now for your channel for some reason. You can get rid of it. Oh you can? Okay, good. So you have to help me with that. But um welcome to the first live episode of the Weekend Movie Bros podcast. Uh today's discussions include uh the Swamp Thing Fiasco, the Avengers Endgame non-spoiler review, as, as well as spoiler discussion towards the end, and um, the box office predictions and a list of the top tw of our 22 MCU list. Those are just some of the stories for today. Once again, I'm Raymond. All right, so I am Jacob from Jacob is here. Both are our channels. By the way, since you are on my channel, you don't have to worry about this. But in case you do want to follow the channel that this is going to be posting on every week, which is called Weekend Movie Bros, it is going to be linked up in the cards and down below. So is my brother's channel, which he just introduced himself. It's up in the cards and linked down below. And of course, um, I decided to give you guys already the non spoiler review of my own taste. Uh, we're going to be, I'm going to reiterate basically what I said in that general thing here. Um, that's going to be linked up below. But, yes. And also, and also, you guys know, I'm not posting a non-spoiler review. My entire discussion will be just through the, just through the live stream today. I figured yeah. it'd be easier that way for everybody if I just do it through this. Yeah, I, I wanted to have fun. I, I was bored. Today, I'm so, so excited I, to talk about this movie. And also, like, it was kind of eating me alive or whatever. But I will also have my listing of the 22, my top 22 movies in the order that we're going to be talking about. That'll be a segment. Then I also have three different stories from my brother that we'll also be talking about. Because normally this would be, like, a more like a podcast type thing where we're going to talk about, like, the daily news. Not so much, like, about a certain, like, subject matter of a movie. But, but today is different. Today is different. Today is bigger than, like, we can both prepare for. So I have a James Wan, um... Sorry. Oh yeah, that yeah yeah that the stuff got announced for twenty five, which I have some issues and concerns about. Oh, not talking about Bond. We can talk about Bond though. It's not a part of this list. We can talk about Bond. I want to talk about Bond because Bond concerns me. All right, we can talk about Bond. This is about Say One's Lot. This is about Stephen King. Um. Oh yeah, because they announced. Well, they announced for it. I forget. We'll talk about it when we get there. We're, we're okay. And then so also, huh? Go on. Sorry, you go. Also, um, we are in Caprio. It's supposed to star in Gilmore Tell's new movie that he's doing after... That excites me. And then also we're going to talk about Game of Thrones dropping in um, its ratings. Because I thought it was really interesting. It flipped the article. Really? I did not know that. Really? Yep, that's why I found it really interesting. And it's small. And most of our conversations are going to be about Marvel today anyways. But I figured we could, you know, it's this type of thing. Yeah. So before we get into our non-spoiler discussions, I first want to talk about our theater experiences last night. Um, you know, this was, this is kind of like yours and mine's, this is kind of like yours and mine's, you know, Star Wars, basically. We have been waiting in anticipation for the ending to find out what was going to happen. And my theater last night was just bananas. When certain things happened that we'll talk about happened. My theater erupted. There's a certain moment, I think you'd agree if your theater did the same thing too, when a certain something went to somebody's hand, my theater went, woo! It, uh, it was electrifying. It was the best movie-going experience I've ever had. I, I had such a blast last night. My experience was, I had a very interesting experience with the movie because I don't really get emotional when I see movies. I'm, I'm a very, very, I'm just kind of here type of person. And with this particular movie, I was screaming with everybody. I was shouting with everybody. I screamed curses at the screen, which I've never done before. I was laughing. Like, I normally am, like, one of those people who are sitting in the back who, like, roll their eyes at people who do these things in the movie. Because huh? you remember me last year with Infinity War when I yelled fuck at the, when I, when I yelled, fuck at the screen. <laughs> yeah. And so, like, it's just, like, one of those things. And so, like, this, I, I was a part of it all which I've never done before. And so it was a very, very transmending like theater experience, not just with the movie itself and the emotions that it brought upon me, but to see the emotions brought on upon my whole entire theater. Cause I, I was very curious to ask you, my whole entire theater was full. Every row, every seat. Yes, I every, every row. In. 
our our the our entire theater was completely packed. That is also something else I think we should talk about. Um, we can talk about towards the end or whatever. Is the amount of money that it made last night alone? It's, it's just, like, fucking crazy. ridiculous. Crazy. Did, did you get an IMAX? Did, oh, you didn't get an IMAX. Did you get a poster last night for the movie? No, um, I'm gonna get one when I go see it with you. I'm uh, I'm I'm very happy. I got my Captain Marvel, Endgame, and Infinity War posters all, all next to each other. They look awesome together. Captain Marvel was so good in this movie. <laughs> so with the non spoiler talking, which is what we're gonna get into next, I'm gonna let my brother go first. I'm just gonna reiterate because I think it's very important that if you have not seen this movie yet, you definitely, definitely need to see it first. Like you need to go in completely blind, just know what you know and yeah. not nothing that you don't know. You can totally watch this. There's nothing wrong with watching our non spoiler we talks and things or anybody else's. It's just I I think the experience was so much better. Me just knowing like tiny tiny yeah. little bit of details. So when I stepped out of that theater last night, it it astounded me that the Russo brothers hit this movie flawlessly. I mean. My brother knows me. I throw out the word perfect and great at everything. And sometimes I do it just because of the moment. And then, you know, I, it, it just, I, I don't really like to say a movie's bad or anything unless it's bad. This movie last night was flawless. I had no issues with it. Um, there are moments in this film that I'm going to remember for the rest of my life witnessing it in the theater. Especially on that giant screen, there's a certain scene, and you know what I'm talking about, the, towards the end of the movie, brought me to tears because of just seeing what I was seeing. It, it It's beautiful. Um, uh, the best performance of the film, by far, was between um, Chris Evans and Robert Downey Jr., um, I know these movies do not get a lot of crap, a, a lot of stuff for the Oscars. RDJ's performance in this movie is Oscar worthy. The score in this movie by Alan Silvestri is worthy of an Oscar. The cinematography is worth. This movie is the Black Panther this year. I really think it deserves a shot this year at the Oscars. It did. The Russos, Kevin Feige, nailed the landing. It is a. This is Marvel's final mar modern masterpiece. The Russo's nailed it. It's a masterpiece, in my opinion. For all the build that they had to do, it was worth it. They 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 fucking nailed it. That's what I thought, non spoiler wise. For me, non spoilerly, I I thoroughly enjoyed the movie as well. I thought it was very very well done. I so I did some research and stuff into it, like I said, because I uh, I had time today and I was like, let's make a non spoiler review. <laughs> so I'm not gonna really talk too much about it because there's a whole video like a 12-minute video about me talking about my favorite things or whatever, I will tell you who my favorite characters are in a non-spoiler you know, answer. But the script is written, it's the same guys who wrote most of all the Captain America movies. And, uh, Chris McFeely and... Uh, Stefan something. Because they're, executive, cause, cause they're, they're executive producers on this one yeah. as well. And personally, I think this is the best one they have delivered. Yes. All of them all. I think this is definitely the best one that they have delivered. And so I think that's a very big shout out. You know, um, the behind the scenes team, I don't think this movie would have been as amazing as it was if we didn't have the Rooster Brothers, if we didn't have the script makers, if we didn't have the VFX teams and all that stuff. And I think that's a really, really excellent way just to show like this is important, you know. And also, I really like how this one, it's not so much a spoiler, is that this one's just more grounded in like here. Like yes. instead of like out Infinity in War is very big Infinity War is very like big scope and crazy locations, whereas this one is more just you're you're back on earth, you're realizing what's been going on, and it's just a it's a it's a fucking movie. <laughs> and so I, I really, really enjoyed that aspect and things like that. And then also for for favorite characters and stuff like that. I'm not going to mention Captain America or Iron Man, as I do believe that mentioning their names are spoiler alerts. <laughs> Even though you know they're in the movie, their roles are just so massive that you can't really talk about them. They did an excellent job. That's not why I'm saying Robbie Downey Jr. should definitely be nominated for the Oscar. Jeez. That's for the first, like, 30 minutes of the movie alone. Oh, my God. Yeah. 
you know, if you've seen the movie, you know, you know what I mean. But my favorite character is by far Black Widow. Yeah. I would say by by far, it's it's probably Black Widow. There are so many characters in this movie. I will not lie. There is just there is many, and everybody has their uniqueness to them. It's not yeah. like every character every character is well done, and they all get a respectable amount of screen time. So before we move on to the stories, um, I do want to mention just because these are different things that have popped up in looking at coverage and stuff for the movie is that you can go to the bathroom. There is a certain part in the movie where you can go to the bathroom and that is towards the beginning of the movie um right after the big thing happens you'll know exactly what i'm talking about when you see the movie um you can go it's basically reiterating a lot of things that we already know and so i would say that's that's the point if you do have to pee you, you, you know where i say you can go to the bathroom if you need to honestly i hate saying this it's, it's in the trailer it's when ronan shows up no see see i don't know no. I'll, I'll explain why when we get to the spoiler discussion. There's a reason why I think so. Yeah, see, see, I think that's new. I think I think I think it's more of like when something else happens. We'll talk about more. But there there is a certain point in the movie, I would say go with a friend who Oh has wait movie. a minute. I know what you're talking about now. Yeah, I think you okay, probably yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's probably better. There's also, funny scenes in it though. It doesn't matter. I still think that's probably the best way. Best time, yeah. Because after that happens, you need to stay in your seat the rest of the movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I say the first ten, you know, first ten to twenty minutes, you have to be in your seat. And there's a certain little section that you're like, okay, I think I can go to the bathroom. But if you ask your friend what you missed, you're being an asshole. So don't. Do yes. It. No. Just accept it that you missed a part of this movie that is wonderful, and that you your bladder is too small, and you should grow it out a little bit bigger. <laughs> a little Maybe bit a UTI. Bigger. It's fine. There's medicine for it. Drink some grape juice. Alrighty. So, uh, who wants to go first on their stories today? Uh, it's on my channel. I'll go first. Uh, you know what? That's fair. <laughs> okay. um, so, the first one. Throw the gonna... hammer down. Yep. <laughs> put too much work into this. <laughs> I'm going to get the first one. That's fair. All right, you go. For, all right, start it off. So, um, what, uh, what, uh, what, what's talk about the Game of Thrones thing? It's easy. It's short. It's small. It gets to the point. So, Game of Thrones, um, had a ratings drop of over. I think your talk, Zachary. Zachary. Did I lose you? Yeah, there you are. Okay, go on. Okay, you were you were frozen on my side, so I'm assuming I was frozen on your side. Yeah, you were. Okay, well, as long as you're back, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, go on. Um, so had a huge rating dip, which I read the whole article written by Variety, by the way, and I didn't. They never actually really talked about anything about ratings droppings, which was really interesting since that's the headline that they went with. So. It's due to the fact that the premiere ended, opened up with 11, um, really close to 12 million viewers. The second episode had a little bit under 10. Like, wow. a little under 10. But in recent past histories, um, that is about average for an average viewer, whereas the premiere and the finale of each season always peaks up to 12, and where as every episode in between is always around a 10 number. Do you think that's going to change next week? I mean, do you think it's going to change Sunday because of what the how, of what of the importance of the episode? We um, well, you mean you mean this week, not next yeah. week? Yeah. Um, but even with that being said, because I do want to reiterate this, because the headline I think is very misleading. Because in the article alone, I'm just going to read part of the first paragraph and stuff that I have screenshot here because I found the sentence really interesting. Is that mm -hmm. with 10.29 million viewers, the second episode of the final season of Game of Thrones, a night. Of the Seven Kingdoms is the fourth largest episode in the history of shows in terms of linear audience, according to Nelson. Then how is that a drop if it's the fourth largest? It's not episode? a drop. If they're saying it's one of the best uh, best viewed episodes in the show's history, then how is that a drop? Yeah, so I, sure. it's part of the reason That's why I want to talk about because I think the article was just bad, and I just didn't really like the I article. Wrote it. Um, I don't. I don't have. I'm on. I have a screenshot of IMBD. Gotcha. That's a that's a weird 
way to write that story. Game of Thrones drops down and it's like they wanted to find a story to make it sound bad, but they could not make a story that makes it sound bad. I think you're frozen again. I don't know if that's on my side or not. And you're back. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's my story. Okay. So I really want to get it. it it's it. I want. I really want to get into this. So about about a week ago, no, about about two weeks ago, we got the Disney Plus announcement, right? Mm-hmm. Everything got established. Well, how much is going to be and whatever. Shortly after that happened, we get this Swamp Thing story. That production has now been halted, and the original 13 episode run of Swamp Thing has now been cut down to 10. And this shows signs that the DC Universe app and the Universe membership thing is in trouble. Because I, I feel like DC realizes that once November hits, unless they've got a good run of shows going, Disney is going to just absorb everybody. And it worries me about Swamp Thing because they now released the teaser, which shows Swamp Thing. And then they showed the. Yeah. Remember I Hi. told you I was doing this for Hi, buddy. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I forgot. You're fine. Uh, I was coming to tell you that there's $10 in quarters. Okay. So hey, crazy. You're okay. I love you. Love you too. That was dad. Um, but. And no, and then they released uh, trailer number two for Swamp Thing, and it was awesome. The body horror aspect looked awesome. I think the creatures, I think Swamp Thing looks great. So why are they risking the show and cutting it by three episodes? That's my concern. Because then they also have Harley Quinn coming out at the end of the year, the animated show. And what the same thing happens to Harley Quinn. And they cut episodes from that. Young Justice Outsiders, we still haven't got the second half of the season. Titans is shooting right now, but what if Titans gets cut? It feels like DC is so worried about other things that they're cutting other they're cutting their shows to bring them more profits to bring back like older things, like the like older cartoons, older comics, that kind of stuff. I, I, I don't want what's good about DC Universe to get struck because other things are starting to come out. That's what I'm worried about. Because I think all of their original programming is really good. Doom Patrol is really good. Titans got better as the show went on. And um Young Justice is great. That it's a whole, like I said in my notes, it's a whole fiasco, and I don't know what they're gonna do. You? Uh, my personal opinion here is that there's a big rumor going around that by the end of the year, the DC thing won't mm-hmm. even be around anymore. Yeah. That, um, it's gonna get moved over into. A bigger company for Warner, just like Disney is having their own like Disney Plus thing. Warner Brothers is going to make it its own like bigger thing out of DC. Well, that's and so been around content, for a while now, hasn't it? Yeah, and so all the content's going to move over there. Personally, I have a strong feeling is that Swamp Thing was probably really hot out of the gate. That the reception and stuff was probably really good for the TV show, mm-hmm. and then something must have went wrong. Obviously, yeah. they cut three episodes off the show. <laughs> or or it could be the fact that there were certain episodes that were just completely filler and that did not need to be there that they were wasting money on, basically. Yeah. That they, they figured the story would be better without them. It could be from a, a exactly a point of saying, hey, sorry, we just don't think it's going to do well and we're not paying any money for it, so figure out how to wrap this up. Or it could be from an exit, it, you know, it could be from a writer being like, do we really need it? You know? Yeah, you know, like thirteen episodes, yay! But is that really the thing anymore? It's more like ten episodes, yay! I mean, I mean, I mean look at um the the the, the Marvel and Netflix shows when they were going on. Everybody wanted ten, not thirteen, because they thought thirteen was too much. So that could be it. But it also it could be the fact that they don't think it's going to do well, and they probably are just like, we want to get out things that people are going to like. That way, we can stick around. You know, the prices are it's too expensive. <laughs> It really is. Well, I mean, like, like with Titans, they just cast their Bruce Wayne too. Yeah. And so they're so they're gonna. So it really feels like Titans is going in the completely other direction. That's a whole other story altogether. I I, I hope I hope the DC Universe original content doesn't suffer from all this. 
because Becca and I watch Young Justice every time the the episodes come out for the four of them. They're great. It's a great modern adult retelling of Young Justice with the season that's been gr- and it's been good. And I don't want it to be hurt. So I, I, I like I like I like what they put out. It's it's a good app. It, 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 I think it gets too much crap now. It's a good app. If if you're a DC fan, it's the thing that you need. But that 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 was one of mine. Okay, one of my stories was hold on. So we can talk about so James Wan and Gabriel du- uh, Gary Deberham, which is also another somewhat he directed a few other horror films and stuff like that, are tackling Stephen King's Vampire Tale together. So, um. In which is Salem's Lot. If you guys don't know what Salem's Lot is, it's about this place in is it? It's like Iowa or something like that. And wow. and it's all about how these this group of um, this father and son move across country to this place because of a horrible thing that happened to them, and so they move to Salem's Lot. This lot whole thing is um, covered in vampires, and like a lot of people die in really really court. You know, horrible ways. It's supposed to be scary. I found it extremely boring, but it's it's also I think the third remake that they're doing of it. It's not like it's never been like turned to screen before, which is really interesting. I this is part of the reason why I want to talk about. I'm excited. James Wan is part of it. Um, if I can't, if I'm not mistaken, he is not directing. He's just producing, so he's helping pick everybody who's gonna be like part of like making the team for it. Which is a good thing, I think. It's not exactly a horrible thing, but it's also not exactly like an amazing thing either because he's not had the best track record. There's been quite a few different horror films that I've seen that have been under James Wan producer <laughs> comment, mm-hmm. and I've not enjoyed them. So that makes me really nervous. But also, I don't get why they're picking stories From that Steve have already been heard. Huh? Yeah, because I wanted to talk to you about that because I've been realizing this. Besides it, Pet Cemetery, Pet Cemetery didn't really pick up with audiences as as much as I thought they would. And now you're talking about the Salem's Lot. I haven't even heard of it before. Well, see, here's my thing with like, I just want them to do like he has so many different titles and things like that. Stop remaking them and part pick a different newer title. You know, he has over sixty books, and only eleven of those are are the Dark Tower stuff. So. There's a well, ton to choose from. Well, let me ask you a question uh, in regards to that. You know, we we as critics or movie people, we talk about this whole remake reboot situation constantly. It's 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 a constant matter that gets brought up between anything like that. I mean, Disney right now is just the hand that cuts the butter when it comes to the remakes. And um. Do you think studios only go with properties that have been done before because there's already an audience with them and they're worried that if they do an original or a different, in this case, a different book that they haven't done before, do you think they'd be worried that even though the Stephen King Stephen King name is on it, that it wouldn't do well? Well, here's a counter to that is I think that's very true. I think that's extremely true. I think that's a big reason why Disney is making so many remakes, to be honest with you, is because it's easier. Originals don't normally do well. It's 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 been proven a time and time again. Unfortunately, yeah. yes, because two of their best original movies are Coco and Inside Out, and they didn't, I didn't do like well. either of those. Which I still don't get the Coco one. I just didn't find it as good as everybody thought it was. As one of those things where I saw after everybody saw it, and mm-hmm. so it was extremely hyped, and so I was expecting something like a masterpiece, and I thought it was okay. Well, remember, Disney's got that new animated film coming out with Chris Pratt and Tom Holland um, next year. I have no idea what you're talking about. I'll look it up, and I'll bring it up next week. Okay. But, but, but go on, as you were saying. But... It's also because, like, for instance, because they have taken, like, risks with Stephen King, like, you know, like, you know, because, for instance, like, they did Dark Tower. Now, sure, that was a very, very bad movie, and there should have been people behind that saying, no, this is crap. This is true. But that's part of the reason. I'm very curious. We'll see how Doctor Sleep does at the end of the year. But that's also a sequel. Like, they have a built-in fan base because it's a sequel to Stephen, you know, to Shining. So... Right. 
So we're, it, it's not even a new original concept. Yeah. It's a sequel to an, a, a really old movie. That, that it's still beloved. That people still yeah. watch like daily. But, but do you think Stephen King would give his condolences to the movie? Because he hated the movie version of The Shining, if I remember correctly. He did. He hated it. So if Stephen King doesn't give his, no you know, do you, do you, would, would it hurt the movie, do you think? No, because of how big The Shining actually is. The Shining is one of the biggest horror films that we created. Okay. So I don't, I, I think that one's more, and I'm sure this one, I'm, I'm going to wait and see until more stories and stuff come out of it. Um, there's a few dark elements and things, but I would love like a radar remake, even though it's a remake and things like that, of like the stand or something like that. Yeah. Like, it's super disturbing and super like creepy and horrible. And like, you don't want to see these things on screen, but I'm very curious to see how someone would bring that to life more than I would be like say one's lot. Say one's lot seems like a cheapskate. So do you think the Stephen King flame might die after this year? No, because of it chapter. No, well, it chapter two coming out and then Dr. Sleep. Do you think the Stephen King flame might die? If they continue to do movies that no one really, no one has real interest in, yeah, I say if because obviously it chapter two is probably a slam dunk. It's going to make a lot of money. We don't know until we see a trailer. It's going to make a lot of money. It's not, I completely agree, but that doesn't just because it makes a lot of money doesn't well, doesn't. I'm, I'm, we're so, in this standpoint. Know. If they're going to continue making Stephen King movies, this is all based on money. This is not based on creative choices or anything. I know. Which sucks. It sucks. I'm not, but in the question that you brought up, it, if it chapter two does extremely well, like it's expected to, and I'm sure it will, but just because how you know big the first one is and how much how cheap these are to make, and then which this one's more expensive because of the cast, but you know what I mean. Yeah. And then if Doctor Sleep does really well and even gets nominated for Oscars, which I'm pretty sure why it's in November. Yeah. Um. Then yeah, they'll definitely continue to move forward with Stephen King projects. So let me give you a scenario. Then what if Doctor Sleep tanks? Like no one goes to see it. It doesn't do well with critics, and that's two this year of Stephen King films that did not do well. But uh, Pet Cemetery really did, critic wise. Pet Cemetery did do really well with the critics. Did it? Yes, it did. It has an eighty percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, yeah, or well, seventy. Six it, it, it didn't yeah. do on well money wise though, did it? No, no, it was a it was the flop. So what if Mr. Sleep is a flop? Do you think they're gonna look at the Stephen King stuff a little bit differently then? I would say they'd probably get like one more chance to see if maybe it was just because of the movie mm -hmm. and not because of the brand. And if it does if it keeps going downhill, then we'll slowly see it just like go away. Go away. Yeah. But okay. right now in horror, it's all about sequels and remakes, and I'm just I'm I'm ready for the original content. I'm I'm kind of over about remakes and sequels and things. Yeah, because I'm I'm you you know me. I'm not a very big horror guy. I I I don't. And there are some horror movies from the from the set from the '60s, from the '70s, and from the '80s that I I hold near dear to my heart. And those are like the slasher movies. Mm -hmm. And I'm tired of hearing about this whole Friday the Thirteenth nonsense of them trying to go back and forth with the deal. And they can't get the rights. If you can't do it, then just stop trying to do it. Clearly, this is a sign from Jason Voorhees himself not to do it. Well, it's because Friday the 13th, the remake, which I really, really enjoy. That's a great movie. movie. Very controversial with the public and the fans themselves. It's a great slasher movie, and Jason's awesome in it. Well, it's it's very controversial with the fans. A lot of fans did not like it and things like that. And, of course, you have the whole Michael Bay thing that did happen with it. But we Don't talk about him. Very true. But with that being said and things like that, um, it still did really well. It did really, really well. And so it's still like a brand. The brand that needs to die, the brand that should die out of respect for the creator himself is Nightmare on Elm Street. Is Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. Because isn't there a rumor going around that trying to remake it again too? Yep. And I think it's wrong. I think it's inappropriate. And I think no, it's it shouldn't. It shouldn't. Um, so a trailer dropped um, this week that I really want to talk about with you. You did a trailer reaction for it, actually. I don't know if you're going to post not. it or not. 
And that is and that is Angley's uh, Gemini Man. Wow. Very it looks good. It looks really good. And um, the first shot of D. H. Will Smith kind of freak, kind of threw me off. Like, like, like when he's getting bandaged on his arm, mm -hmm. and you just see the side of his face. It looked kind of off to me, but the rest of the trailer, it looked great. I think the concept's really cool of how you know you made a person to kill this person because this one's superior in every other way. I like that story. I think, it, and the one thing I hate about the trailer was the forever young thing i thought that was stupid the, the song in the background i thought it was yeah, stupid. i know what you're talking about but I, that, that's why I, I think it looks really good it looks promising i wasn't expecting it to look that good and now i'm intrigued i particularly really enjoyed it as well um i'm not a huge will smith fan that i know not the biggest I will have to say, but I was thoroughly impressed with the visuals. The story, it's, it's, uh, okay, I, I won't lie, I was a little offended because Ooh, I've already on. seen it done once and it was a very, very well movie. Did not do which, so well. Which one? Looper. Oh, yeah, Looper's fantastic. Looper is a fantastical movie. If you start thinking about it, it's practically the same story, just with somebody else playing the younger version. You know what? I never really put that in perspective before. That's kind of true. Yeah. It's almost the exact same story beat for beat of a man hunting himself down. Huh. We'll have to wait and see if they're exact. We'll have to wait and see if they're similar in that kind of aspect. Also, with Mary Elizabeth Winstead, who I do enjoy as an actress, but with all the controversy and stuff that is around her right now, even though it is kind of dying down, I thought that was really interesting as well as she being in the movie and that she what beat out some pretty big what what controversy I oh, heard yeah. about it. You, you don't know about the controversy mm -mm. so um when her here and ironically even mcgregor who got her the role as huntress supposedly it's the rumors and stuff in the rumor mill um she broke up their marriage she broke up his marriage with his wife huh during fargo Huh. Yeah. It's a big deal. Google it. I'll look it up. Yeah, Google it. It's very interesting. Okay. Um, I just doing the Gemini thing because it sounded interesting. Um, let's talk about because you brought it up earlier. Um, and this was I think this will lead really well into the spoiler discussion. Let's talk about box office for the weekend. So, how much did it make last night? Sixty-one point two million dollars. Jesus Lord. So, in comparison, because I figured you should, you want, you want other numbers, right? Yes, please. So, in comparison to the previous big box off, hold on, hold on, give me one second. Okay. I, I'm gonna use my phone instead. If I, because I don't want to tell you the wrong movie. Yeah. Who has the second biggest box office? But it's like a thirty million dollar difference. If, if I'm not wrong, it it like tarnished like the world record for Thursday night box offices like of all time. So uh, believe it. Well, I think this just once again reproves because the numbers are wrong. Last night from Wednesday from overseas, and it's made one hundred and sixty million dollars overseas. Plus the sixty million dollars is already made last night. Alone, that does not include any show times for today whatsoever. That is just for midnight showings. You know, you know the normal last night things it is definitely making three hundred million dollars, if not more, this weekend. this weekend. It's I cannot wait to see Monday's numbers. I cannot wait to see it. I am more curious. I will not lie about next weekend's drop. I don't think it's going to be that big. Oh, it's going to be somewhat big, just because. Um, of the fact that it's of, of the nature of the movie, you think? Huh? Of the of the nature of the film, you think it'll be a drop? Well, I just think because the opening itself is really big. Yeah. I can't hold on. I'm sorry. You're good. I just can't find the article that I was looking for. So. So here it is. I want to tell you the wrong one. So this 
and it's not as big. I thought it was as bigger. So Avengers Endgame has surpassed. This is from um, CNN, by the way. Mm-hmm. If you were curious about the the source or whatever. Um, to rise the record held by another Disney property, Star Wars: The Force Awakened, which opened with fifty seven million dollars back in two thousand fifteen, had never came close to it. Um, Infinity War made thirty nine million, which is the movie I was thinking of when I said it was like thirty million difference. So there was almost like a $20 million difference between the last movie and this movie. That's how many more people have gotten on the ball wagon of the Avengers movies since then. Yeah. And so it is projected to make $305 million domestic here this weekend as its projection rate. That's crazy. There you are. Yeah. But um, that's just that's just bonkers. It truly is to see this movie do what it's doing boggles my mind. I just it, okay. I, I I can't contain it anymore. Before Are you we ready? jump into spoilers, huh? Before we jump into spoilers, because I really do think it should be the last topic. Because it's gonna we're gonna spend the most time talking about because i have a lot of things i need to ask you about like a lot of opinions and things uh-huh. so I, let's go through our ranking oh and then yeah we'll talk about it, okay uh, so you that makes the most sense. yeah i figured we can start from the bottom work our way up i think that's what so do you want so if you want you can do your 21 through 11 and then i'll do my 21 through 11 and then you can do your 10 through 1 and i'll do my 10 through 1 is that how we're going to do this i was just going to figure we'll go back and forth no, we can you, you you can do your twenty one through eleven, and then I'll do my twenty one through eleven. You do your ten through nine, uh, ten through ten through one. I'll do my ten through okay. one. That's fine. So I spent a long time figuring out this last night, by the way, because by the time I got down to a certain number, I was like, "Wow, this is really far down." There's certain movies that are further down my list than I expected, basically. Um, but there is a trend. Figure, tell me if you figured out the trend, because I have one. So my least favorite MCU movie that comes out number is it twenty one or twenty two? It's 22. Okay. At number 22, is no shocker between us, is The Incredible Hulk. Nope, not a shocker. I think it's like one of the worst movies I've seen in years. So, you know, practically unwatchable. The second worst movie obviously goes with the more appropriate one that people kind of agree with better, and that is For the Dark World. <laughs> Probably the worst MCU Although movie. Although we talked about Endgame, Thor 2 got a lot better for me. Yes, I do agree. Um, for like I said, it's really interesting the movies they chose. Yes, I completely agree. Oh, the the the, the three movies specifically very interesting. <laughs> I was very shocked. I will not lie. I was like, and then also the cameos, which we'll get into. Who showed back up for this movie? Is also, it fucking impressive? Really shocked. But either way, number twenty one is for the Dark World. Number, hold on, I gotta look at my my little screenshot here. To make sure I'm telling you the right one. Oh, number um, 20 is Ant-Man the Wasp. And then number um, 19. 19. I cannot keep track of these numbers. Number 19 is Iron Man 2. Mm-hmm. Number 18 is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Mm-hmm. And then number 17 is, yeah. is Spider-Man Homecoming. Ooh. Is it higher up on the list than you thought, or is it lower on the list than you thought? Lower on the list than I thought. <laughs> I have opinions about that movie. Number okay. 16? Is that yes. where I'm at? Okay, thank you. I don't have a number. I'm going off by my You're good. You're good. You're good. Um, It's Black Panther. Number 15? Oh, oh, hold on. Okay, from Spider-Man up, they get moved up. Spider-Man's number 15, Black Panther's number 14, because Avengers Age Ultron is number 16. Sorry, I messed that up. That makes more sense. Yeah, yeah, there you go. What number am I going to? You're on 11. So I'm on 13 now? Yeah. 13. Hold on, I lost my track. God dang it. Oh, 13 is Doctor Strange. Mm -hmm. And then 12 is the original Avengers. Mm-hmm. 
and then um, Eleven is the first Captain America. Okay. So, 22 is Iron Man 2 for me. Um, 21 is Thor The Dark World. 20 is Ant-Man and the Wasp. 19 is Avengers Age of Ultron. 18 is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. 17 is Captain America the First Avenger. Uh, 16 is Thor. 15, Iron Man 3. 13, Incredible Hulk. 12 is Ant-Man. 11 is Black Panther. Oh, right. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Number 10 is Iron Man 3. That second, that like fourth rewatch, wow, it, it bumped the movie. I tell and you. honestly, Endgame helps me like Iron Man 3 a lot more now. Oh, because of the, the thing that they yeah. set up that you don't yeah. realize they set up until like this yeah. movie, and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, oh, number oh. huh, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> number nine is uh, four. Number mm -hmm. eight is the original Iron Man. Even though I'm not a huge fan of it, I have tons of respect for it. So, you know, respect is respect. Number seven is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1. Because the rewatch, I tell you, number six, are we at six? Yeah. Is the Avengers. Mm hmm. It's Which one? Really exactly. The first one. Oh. Yeah, sorry. Oh, right. We haven't said the other ones. Sorry. <laughs> the original Avengers is number six. Number There's four five. of these now. You have to say titles. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm losing track of the movies that I've said. Oh, number five. Just, mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm back on track. I, I recircled myself. It's Captain America First Avenger. Mm -hmm. Number four. Four is Civil War. Mm-hmm. Number three is Captain Marvel. Mm -hmm. Number two is Captain America Winter Soldier. Mm -hmm. And number one is Endgame. Where was Infinity War on your list? I missed the number. It's, 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 because I'm not, I don't have the actual numbering. It's, um, right. it's right, it's in between in, uh, Captain Marvel and Winter Soldier. Gotcha. Yeah. So number 10 is Avengers. Number nine, Captain Marvel. Number eight, Guardians, number one. Number seven, Doctor Strange. Number six, Spider-Man Homecoming. Number five, Avengers Infinity War. Number four, Thor Ragnarok. Number three, uh, hang on. Um, number three, uh, Iron Man 2. Number two is a tie between uh, Cap Captain America Winter Soldier and Captain America Civil War, and number one is Avengers Endgame. If that doesn't sell you what, what we're about to talk about, get ready. <laughs> and now, for anybody who has not seen Avengers Endgame, spoiler, I highly recommend that you officially click off of this video. Thank you for watching the show up to this point. We hope you come back next week. Okay. Yep. Where do you want to start? Um, we're going to start with the beginning of the movie, as a normal person would normally start. You're going to make me wait, aren't you? Technically, the beginning of the movie is very shocking. Yes. Okay. This is the, beginning, oh. this is the part of the movie that I screamed a curse word at the screen. So... What we've been what we what we've been predicting about Hawkeye's family was completely correct. Oh, I'm not talking about Hawkeye. Sorry, I totally forgot about that. It was a great way to start the movie off because it picks up right where Infinity War ends, but we get to see it what happens with Hawkeye and the way they shot it of the overhead camera of the shaky camera following Hawkeye, like looking for his daughter, looking for his wife, and it's just going, oh. Which I have to reiterate here, because they did the same exact thing that they did with Ant Man and the Wasp, like the same exact thing that they did, 
it makes you wonder of why we got Ant-Man and the Wasp as a movie. In general, yes. Instead of just doing this, because Hawkeye's story got all put in the first, like, five minutes of the movie, or three yeah. minutes of the movie. How is that respectful to a character that's been around way longer? Then, than... yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, but let's get into why Robert Downey Jr. deserves what we talked about. The stuff on the ship made me want to ball. The 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 the, the scene between him and Nebula doing the table football is just funny. And you won. Congratulations. That was fun. <laughs> Her monotone voice just works so well in this. And then they do the scene from the opening of the first teaser for the movie where he's talking to the helmet. And just just looking at him, just, 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 just looking at his physicality, of how much weight he's lost, the way he looks. And then when he's done recording, he just lays down and goes to sleep. And it's a perfect metaphor for the rest of the movie with him. I'm holding it together. Just watching him lay there on the ground and then seeing Nebula pick him up and put him in the seat and cover him up, put her hand on his shoulder and just look at him and go, oh, I guess. <clears throat> and then how do they get home? Perfect way to bring in this Brie Larson. <laughs> it was a very, very short role in this movie, by the way. Which, which is fine. It makes sense in the movie why she has such a short role. It makes sense. Um, so then from there, we go back to Earth, and I'm going to let you take this part over, because talking about the scene that we're about to talk about with Robert in Avengers HQ okay. makes me want to cry, and I don't want to cry right now, because I'm, I'm, I'm going to lose it towards the end of this discussion, so you take over. So this scene is just hard to watch. <laughs> so they come back down. And he embraces with Pepper, which is really cute, but it's something we have seen before. It's nothing new. And then great, and then uh, Nebula and Rocket get together and have that moment of, you know, yeah. Solomon saying everybody's gone. All things that we have seen before. Nothing too new to our eyes. There's a lot of new stuff here, but nothing <laughs> <laughs> right there, the whole last hour. Oh. <laughs> Practically completely new. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Sorry, I'm still. I'm my brain's stuck on one scene. I know. So, I don't see you talking about. We'll we'll get there. We're not there yet. We'll get there. Um, and so he gets taken into the facility. He is very very malnourished. You know, he has an IV bag feeding him fluids, and he looks completely horrible. He I'm so bad. happy that they totally did not show us any of this. As they could have shown us a sign in the trailer, but they digitally yes. edited him to look like normal Rowie Downey Jr. Then they digitally edited a version that we got in the movie of him being so scaly and skinny and things like that. I very, very much enjoyed that. And then also, because from the trailer standpoint, you think they get along, like him and Cap are like going to be best buddies <laughs> like, right off the bat. I'm very, very happy that they are not and that they do have the altercation of where he is screaming at him said this is your fault you were not there i tried fighting him we if we were together we could have won and then he calls him a liar just a straight liar and a traitor and i'm like this is why civil war is so important <laughs> and when he takes off his his iron man oh, away, he, he rips off that head. thing and like here, next time you fight him, you wear it. You wear it next time you have to go fight him. You wear it. And he just falls. Rhodey's there trying to catch him like, dude, calm down. It's okay. No, I'm fine. I need to let this out. And just collapses. It's just. But that's oh. not the big part here. No. The big part, which I'm. <laughs> I screamed at the screen. <laughs> was the fact that Thanos has reused the Infinity Stones two days ago. And he is on this planet. Now, this Next planet. What a great captain. Let's go get this son of a bitch. <laughs> I thought it was really funny how many times he actually did curse. He in cursed movie. a lot in this movie. <laughs> I found it was really interesting. It really shows the character development. As, as, as matured throughout the series. But, um, and so 
Nebby was like, oh yeah, I totally know where he went. He went to the garden. And Brody's response, oh, so he has a retirement plan. <laughs> Rhodey had some of the best lines in this movie. <laughs> and, of course, it's, so they go and they go to go find him. They figure out the planet he's on, and they all, you know, it's that funny scene of, like, who's not been in space yet? Because they're, you know, then they go in space. Captain Marvel goes down to look and see where he's at. And I, I love, love her reaction when she comes up. So what's it look like down there? There's no defenses. There's no army. No nothing. It's just him. I love her reaction. I absolutely love because I'm I'm a sucker for Thanos. I have to say I really enjoyed his character, um, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you can love your villain as much as you hate. Yes, I love Thanos. He's the best MCU villain oh, yeah. ever. He's the he got villain solidified villain. the last hour of this movie. He's uh, the best MCU villain. Huh? He got solidified in the last hour. He's the best MCU villain. I would say there's only been like two or three villains that I've actually been scared. For our protagonist, a part of the movie Iron Man three, it always Ooh. terrifies me that somebody's gonna die in that movie, and then Killmonger, and then Killmonger was such a great villain as well. Um, but I still have problems with that third act. It has nothing to do with him. It's because no. the third act's whack. Uh, but Thanos is just Thanos. I love the slow moment. I love how he's going. He's collecting food he's making food and you can tell he's still hurt from using the stones again because he's just creeping up the stairs and he and looks he like just that he's like in peace that he's happy that he's which finally is terrible huh <laughs> which is terrible but it's not i can understand where you're coming from and i can understand where a lot of people are coming from to be honest this is a very very negative unpopular <laughs> opinion and i get that but it's like, it's okay. Terrible. Instance, the man's sitting there going, I did it. For instance, the feeling he's feeling of snapping his fingers and committing mass genocide is like how I feel when I finish a book. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> no, no, it's accomplishment. I completed my goal, which was to finish the book type thing. And so, like, I understand. I thought it was like. Right. You're comparing mass genocide to finishing a book. If it means anything, the book's not about mass genocide. <laughs> it doesn't help. I have another one that's up there that it is, though. Anyway, go away. So anyway, the Avengers so, go down. Well, actually, first, Captain Marvel comes down and just blasts the shit out of him in this hut. Holds yep. him back. And um, I forget who asked uh, for the stones first. Is it, Thor or is it Thor or Steve? I think it's Thor that asked for the stones first. Is it Thor? No, it's Steve. Is it Steve? Steve. And then, um, and then, and then, th and Thanos says they're gone. And Natasha yeah. goes, "What do you mean they're gone?" Well, no, and, no. Was, was it Natasha? No, no you're, Natasha. Once again, because no one believes him, asks, "Where are the stones?" And then he reiterates, "I, you know, I did it." And she's like, "No, you used them two days ago." And he's like, "To destroy them, they are no I longer the stones to get rid of the stones." Yeah. Which and then, they, of yeah, and so and, then, and so, um, well, we forgot to mention this when they first come into the hut, Thor cuts off the arm of the Infinity Gauntlet, and they oh. look on the gauntlet, and the, and the stones aren't there. Yeah, yeah, that's why they're asking is because because they, you know, they thought they solved their problem, and yet, and know. then you know, Thor decided to do what he did, and that was the first gasp moment of my theater is when Thor proceeded to use Stormbreaker, and you want to say it? Yes, I do. Say it. He cut off his head. He just... <laughs> Which is a is a throwback to aim, you know, aim for the arm or aim for the head, you know. From and I love what Thor world. says, because Steve asked, what did you do? He's like, I aimed for the head. <laughs> and I really, really love how this particular moment truly messes him up. It do we find out how much it messes him up. <laughs> It's one of those things they didn't show us in the trailer. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> Korg. We're getting too far ahead. We're getting too far ahead. So, <laughs> and, and then we get five. Yeah, and then we, we jump five years later. I love how they did that, by the way. The five years later. Just to let you know how much time has passed since that. 
But I do want to mention this is the point in the movie where my whole entire theater is gasping because we because he died, by the way, because Thanos has died, and it's five years later, and we're all <laughs> gasping, and they're all like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> so, just wanted to point that out. That is that moment in the theater where I got up and I screamed, "No, what is going on?" Then I sat back Where's down. Where's the rest of your movie? <laughs> And boy, do they have more movie. <laughs> and so then we start with Black Widow five years later at the compound. No, we start, we start with Tony. We start with Steve. Yeah, I didn't really like the scene. That's why I skipped it in my brain. Um, but no, we start off with Steve doing basically like a therapy session with everybody trying to get over still what happened five years ago with the snap. And uh, Joe Russo, one of the directors, he's the he's the, he's the guy that's talking so much. Yeah, he yeah. plays. He, he plays the first LBTQ, uh, LGBTQIA character in the MCU, huh? LGBT. Yeah, he plays that. He plays the first character for that, which is cool. And um, the uh, actually the other, the other cool thing too, because I'm I'm gonna throw out Easter eggs while we're talking about this. Uh, the creator of Thanos is sitting next to Joe Russo. Uh, from the comics, the guy who created Thanos is in that room talking to him. And um, so basically, they're all talking about, you know, I had a good day today. Um, Joe Russo's character, I had a good day today. I had a date with this guy, went really well. And Steve was like, that's great. You, you went for it. And, th and then Steve goes, you know, if we all don't try to keep up with what's going on, then Thanos should have snapped all of us out of existence. We just got to keep trying. And then we go to, I'm going to let you handle all the Black Widow stuff because. Because you want to make me cry. Yes. So, <laughs> talk about Natasha's. Um, by the way, Captain Marvel love the hair, which is really funny because people have been asking if she would ever cut her hair into like the mo the mohawk that she is supporting into the com in, in the comics right now. So I found that was really really interesting, and she did, and that she did. <laughs> I am wondering if it was digitally done that way, or if I don't think so. Just because she fought, she she filmed the movies, and so. I'm assuming that's why I don't like her hair in Captain Marvel in her own movie because it's a wig. Is my assumption is that it's a wig. It and makes that, more sense now if it's a wig. And at the beginning of the movie, where they're coming back from um, getting Tony and stuff, is her actual hair. Yeah, and then she cuts it. It's my assumption. Sorry, we don't need to talk about hair, but you know, it looks awesome. <laughs> I'm, I'm, so there's this council meeting. So everybody's gone off into their own locations. So it's Rocket and Nebula, right? Rocket and Nebula. Uh, Rocket, Rocket's on his own, and so is Nebula. No, wait, no, no, no. Rocket and Nebula are together. Yeah, that's what I thought. So Rocket and Nebula are together. Then you have Rhodey, and then you also have Captain Marvel. Is that it? Uh, Rhodey, Nebula, Captain Marvel, Rocket. Yeah, because Rhodey's in Mexico. Yeah, yeah, I'm um, not there yet. I'm just making sure I got the lineup right. Yeah. And so they're all giving their own order. So, like, um... We're basically giving a debrief to Natasha about what's going on across the universe. Yeah, because Natasha feels that she believes that she has to protect the whole entire universe because of this one thing that happened, which is just so sad, okay? So, watching her slowly eat a peanut butter sandwich, I never thought some, watching somebody eat a peanut butter sandwich would make me so sad. Well, it's, it it's simple, like, just the fact that you can tell she's, like, there's tears. Jared Johansson is an excellent actress, but I don't believe that we've seen anything like we saw. Natasha looked emotionally drained. She looked like she was just done. This is probably the best I've ever seen. Yes. Sarah Johansson in this role, which is deservedly so. This is probably the best movie they have given her so far. So I'm really, really looking forward to Black Widow, the movie. We'll talk about speculations. We'll talk about that when we get to the movie. Yeah, we're, at the end of this, we'll talk about speculations and theories about going forward with Phase 4 um, and Phase 3 with, you know, Spider-Man or whatever. But that's the point. And it's so nice to look at Spider-Man stuff now and not go, well, that kind of... No, it doesn't. <laughs> well, now it's really interesting because our theory does, doesn't actually technically make sense. No, it doesn't. <laughs> go so on. That's the interesting part. Yes, so go on. Um, and so each person gives their own thing about the galaxy. Is, it's okay. you know. And Captain Marvel's like, there's always bad things happening. I'm here. So you can't really expect me to tell you an honest opinion that you want to hear you know, type thing. Which is being respectful when you know type thing. And yeah. then Rhodey is like, she tells Rhodey tells him about this thing that happens in Mexico about all these cartel people being dead. 
she says, oh, it's probably a rival gang. And he's like, no, it's him. It, we all, we all, you know, and, um, and you can tell in her eyes, she starts to cry a little, like not fully tearing no. up yet. We're getting there. That's not happened there. yet. I love and, what she says to Rody. I love what she says to Rody. And she's like, because Rody's like, should we really be doing this? Should we really be keeping an eye on him and doing, you know? And she's like, can you please just let me know when you when you find him next? Like just, and it still gives me cold chills. And, and, and then Rody goes, Natasha, we really. And then she goes, please. And, and he's then, like, all right. right. And then goes away. And I just that and moment. Just, it just shows the connection between these two and why they set it up so beautifully in the first Avengers with the Budapest thing. You're you're you're, you're just connected to these two. The the stuff on the farm in Age of Ultron. The Civil War stuff and, and, and Civil War, it's just, you feel it. And, and so that like, makes itself towards the middle of the movie so much more. Not there yet, Zachary. <sighs> not ready to cry yet, Zachary. <laughs> I'm not ready to cry yet. But I think it's very I think it's very important to mention that in the, her point of her life right now, she feels like she has lost everybody. She feels like she has lost everything. That this is her family. That it is her job, her duty to get back her family in any shape, way, or shape or form and if she can't do that and she needs to protect everybody in her power because that, that was what she believes and so that makes what happens later on just so much more sad sad but also satisfying in a way yes because i think that her energy, we used a lot during this discussion satisfying yeah you're yeah, gonna use a lot especially so, towards the last half of the movie so um we go from that to steve coming in from his meeting and uh, he's trying to say something optimistic, and Natasha's like, "If you try to get my hopes up, I'm gonna throw a sandwich at your face." And Steve's like, "Fair enough." <laughs> and and then Steve gives that great speech about, you know, er, you know, I'm telling my best to tell everybody just to move on, but not us. And then, so this is where the first, this is where the first time I saw the trailer manipulation was in this scene. Because you remember in the teaser, we see her with the blonde hair, just straight blonde hair, saying that's new footage. When in reality, it's the five years later mark, and we see, well, actually, no, go back a little bit. We need to go to Scott when he gets back. Oh, yeah, yeah, we, yeah. So I'll take over for this part. We'll, we'll go back and forth for scenes that, that each of us want to talk about. So the Scott stuff for me, I love Ant Man. I love Ant Man a lot. I love Scott Lang. And, I, I love Scott Lang. I love um, Paul Rudd in this role. Um, his reaction to coming home from being in there for five years is perfect. But the best part about this entire scenario was him looking for that name. I'm not going to say the name yet because it leads into the scene with that name. Looking for that name. He goes to the house, knocks on the door, and who do we see but teenage Cassie. Her reaction to seeing her dad. Because her believing that he was gone. Just, it was so good. That hug felt so genuine. We've only seen this person playing older Cassie this one time. It, has it felt been. like the five-year wait of him coming home poignant. The hug felt so gen. And seeing Paul Rudd just tear up from seeing his daughter because he was stuck in the quantum realm for so long. I just... And so from then we go to the trailer part where he's knocking on the door saying, Hey, it's Scott. You remember me from Germany? I'm the giant man, uh, Ant-Man. I know you know that. And they go, is that new footage? It's from the front camera. And then we get into Scott's idea. Take it from here. So Scott was obviously in um, the quantum realm. Guessed, huh? Quantum suits. We guessed it. <laughs> in the quantum realm. And he had said, that as it has been five years out here, it was like five hours or something. Five, uh, five, uh, five hours, yeah. Yeah, something like that. It's, it's a very, very short amount of time because time in there works differently. Now, to be honest with this review, we're not going to really talk about so much about the time travel stuff. Um, we're going to talk about the elements, but it really, when you start really thinking about it, it's really convoluted. Yes. And uh, it's really not really thought out really well. It's like, cool. And, it's cool, but it's like cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I don't want to, I don't, I love the movie so much that I don't want to find problems and flaws with it. And if there's any flaw that I can personally pick out, I agree with the time traveling stuff. It's the time traveling stuff. Just because it's just, it's, there's time several things that happen. It's just, it's huh? just all there is to it. Time travel is hard to do in anything. 
because you're because you're, you're drawing a they bring it up when they're talking about the time travel thing you're drawing a fine line and trying to fix something and then causing an actual reality and what actually happens and then also like it's really weird because it makes such a big deal about not being able to change things but when they do do things that would change the future there is no repercussions for the things that they did which i, I want to get, get in that with captain at the end of the movie and also nebula yes both those oh. characters did sent interesting things with their original self we're getting really far ahead of ourselves but do interesting well, i don't things. mean about that i mean about cap at the end yeah 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 like that alone it's really really cool sequence but when you really start to think about it and the science and the logic that we were put in in force it looks like it, nothing changed at all yeah. from when yeah, it comes it back, he's just sitting there but we'll get to when we get to that yeah anyway so scott comes up with this idea to do yeah, we can go back in time get the stones to bring everybody back so then we go to this random cabin in the woods. yeah he's outside already we know it's Iron Man's house. Yeah, no, we see Tony, but he's going to this tent, and we're like, "What's the tent for?" Out pops this little Iron Man, and what and what comes off the helmet is his daughter. And I'm like, it, "I'm," it's so cute. It's I so the, cute. I like the idea of him having a kid. Yes. I just don't like the care the kid actor they chose. I agree with that too. Everybody's having issues with the kid actor that they chose, but I like her though. For a simple fact that she feels innocent, like she's not trying to sell anything. She she seems like an innocent little girl who loves her dad so much, or as I like to say, she loves her three thousand. I'm not gonna cry. <laughs> I'm not gonna cry. So, um, Tony picks up Morgan, which is her name, beautiful name by the way. I'll talk and, about it. It's okay. I'm not gonna cry during. Thank, yeah, thank, 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 thank you. Please take it. Oh. So he picks her up. He takes her inside. Oh. And well, actually, he doesn't take her inside. No, 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 it's, um, Tony, Natasha, and Scott show up. Nata not Tony. Chris. Sorry, Steve. 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 Natasha and Scott. Natasha and um. Scott. Scott, thank you. I blanked really hard. <laughs> they all show up, and um. He takes in, you know, Morgan or whatever. They sit down and have a conversation. Tony is not for the idea of time travel. At not at all. all. In which, in his defense, he came to a realization. He, he got his, you know, he had the love of his wife, which he was really scared. He that got was lucky. Funny. And he the, got and, really lucky. In the snap, him and Pepper got very lucky. And oh, we are missing a very, very small detail, though. The helmet that little iron man had on was the rescue helmet it plays a bigger awesome. part later on in the movie so we just should mention it that it exists there's this thing in the garage that exists that's really really cool it's fantastic but i'm getting ahead of myself yes you are oh that ending <laughs> sorry the last hour it just deserves to be talked <laughs> but go no, on why is it three hours long I, I, I love what uh, what tony says to scott are you really trying to pull a back to the future is that what you're trying to do here and scott's like no, he's like, I'm glad you're not, because it sounds crazy. <laughs> and so that doesn't work. Tony shuts down the idea. I'm I'm giving it like a so this video is not like like nine hours long. Tony shuts it down real fast <laughs> and they leave. <laughs> and who do they go to? <laughs> Probably one of the best characters in this movie. They hid this so well. Because in the I entire the entire so soon. The entire trailers and posters only showed the one thing, not this. <laughs> this is the Doctor Hulk. <laughs> well, Professor Hulk. It's not Doctor Hulk in this. It's Professor Hulk. Oh, <laughs> that's so and crazy. I will tell you this much: being one of the gay community, <laughs> Professor Hulk is definitely very, very, very hot. For being a green dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, the selfie scene. Oh, remember, stay. Oh, are are you sure they really want to take a selfie with you? Yeah, oh, yeah. Take the selfie. Take the selfie. All right, kids, say it. Remember, stay green. <laughs> 
it's almost like he made a whole life for himself about yeah. being the Hulk. Well, <laughs> He's like a spokesperson. I love how he describes it. You know, it took me five years, but I realized, you know, Hulk's not a disease. He's a He's a way of life. He sounds like a hippie when he talks about it. <laughs> and they're like, so, Bruce, can you help? He's like, it's not part of my strategy. I don't know anything about this, but let's give it a whirl. <laughs> I love Hulk so much in this movie. So Hulk agrees, and then <laughs> going back to the what do we call him? We call him Bruce or Hulk? Hulk. What I'm we... gonna call him Hulk. Yeah. Call Hulk. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Bruce. You're no longer with us. Oh, uh, and he's wearing shirts now. <laughs> There's a great thing with the shirts. <laughs> We're not there yet, but it was an excellent scene. Uh. <laughs> So, so, okay. What is okay? So then they 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 go and test the quantum realm thing with Scott. Yeah. They 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 test the quantum uh, of going back and forth in time with Scott with Hall. Well, no, I'm trying to figure out if that's what happens next, or do they call Nebula in them, or is it not until they actually get? It's not until after that. So after so after after they get Hulk. They go back to Avengers HQ and they bring the dirty van in, which remember that van. That van is important. Um, they, I mean, they we're bring, assuming you have seen the movie. We're just doing a play-by-play. -play. This movie makes Ant-Man the Wasp the most important film to watch before you see Endgame. It just does, and I love that. And yeah. so, and so uh, Dr. Hulk's like, I think we're good. And Steve's like, are you sure about this? And Hulk's like, absolutely not. We're ready. <laughs> And they send Steve back, uh, and they send Scott back, and he comes back and forth as a kid, as an adult, and as a baby, and back again. He's like, I think my past self peed on me, or my adult self, I don't know. <laughs> or maybe me. And, 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 and Hulk's like, time travel! <laughs> and then, so, obviously, um, the only person who, who found that as a win <laughs> was, was Hulk. Everybody else found that as a loss, because, you know, you don't want to send them back and then come back as babies. Like, yeah. anyway, it's understandable. Hulk was like, success. <laughs> and so Captain America goes outside and he's sitting there contemplating like everything. And then, oh, side note, we did skip a whole thing. So Tony Stark ended up actually really liking the idea and making the time travel. Which uh, I did not like this at all. How quick he figured out time travel. I didn't like that. Oh, at all. Exactly. The funniest things with his kid. He's like, shit. He looks over. Oh no. He's like, what are you doing up? Shit. <laughs> what do you want? An or a uh, popsicle? A popsicle sounds good. You know that's extortion, right? <laughs> and that leads into the beautiful line of him talking to his daughter and going, "I love you." He's like, "No, I love you 3,000." Go on. <laughs> Oh, the, what 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 would they say back to each other? Can you repeat it like one more time? I don't wanna. I love you three thousand. Yeah, they did. So that was mean. What? That was mean. What was mean? Repeat, making me repeat what they said. No, what do you do? You're gonna have a lot of fun when I start crying. So, Jake, how about that Black Widow, huh? You know what, Zachary? You know? <laughs> There's a line. <laughs> All right. Let's, let, and then so they do that with Scott. And then what well, everybody's dubbing, the taco scene happens when Scott goes to sit down and eat the taco. And he's trying to eat it. And then the Guardian ship comes down. And the taco just goes. <sighs> and he's like, Rody. And then nobody was like, Rody, be warned. There's a squeamish guy out here sitting down eating a no. taco. There's, yeah. a, there's an idiot. Oh. And then Rody lands and it scares the shit out of Scott. And then Hulk <laughs> just comes over and goes, Here, have two of mine. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> so from this point, I think we go to the Ronin stuff, I think. Right? All right, um, but um, I think from this point we go. So you can take over now because it's, it's Natasha and Clint. I no, think we are skipping ahead. 
Do they get Thor first or do they get Rogue? Yeah, they go get Thor first. Oh, so we go to do Asgard, don't we? <laughs> because they land and Rocket looks at Hulk and says, are you coming? And they go and they ride on the truck and it's like, <laughs> it's like cute little montage with Rocket and Hulk. The music <laughs> of him riding in the truck and they're going, da, 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 da. and everybody looking at the truck going, okay. And so they go to New Asgard, which I really, really liked how it was over in Norway because like, of, of what Odin said to, uh, to Thor. This would be a nice place. Asgard's not a place, it's a people. And this would be really good for the people. And Thor took that uh, kind of too literally. <laughs> so we get there and we figure out that Valkyrie is practically running the place. Oh, with, uh, four women one, thing. one thing only that is that is alcohol. And then we figure out that he lives on a hill. <laughs> and so we go up to the hill. And he's and got this, is, this is another one of those shots that they end up changing from the trailer. They digitally edited out Hulk when when Rabbit Rocket opens the door. When Rocket opens the door, which I thought was really cool. That was one of my favorite shots of the trailer. Then having Hulk there made it even better. <laughs> better. And they get in there. <laughs> and um, well, you see, uh, Thor. Uh, bloated Thor. It's kind of, it has a, like a 12 pack belly. Not even a six pack belly. It's like a 12 pack belly and a beard the size of like, like it's. I love how they hit this. <laughs> And it's not like the belly goes away either. The belly's there the whole time. Until the end. Huh? Until the end. For the final battle, it's gone. And then, and then really? he puts, yeah. No, no. After, when he puts on the suit to fight Thanos, the, the gut's no, no, not. No, no, it's there. You have to pay attention. They they made the suit, and he has a, he has a bigger belly. Oh. Uh, when you see okay. it again, watch it. Because I, I was looking at the poster, because I was talking about for my non spoiler review. And I was looking at the poster and things like that. The his poster, his own poster. You can kind of slightly see how they enlarge the belly on the poster. It was hilarious. Oh, but the best part of this entire scene, Thor's great. Korg and Meek. <laughs> Thor, there's someone on my game making fun of me. <laughs> Spam Master 69. I will come there and kick your butt. Well, yes, go cry to your father. <laughs> They're playing Fortnite. So are you guys here to fix the television? My kid was really active. Huh? <laughs> the password's over there. Go connect to the left side. <laughs> but, then then, so, but then it gets serious with Thor and Hulk. He's like, we need you, man, because of Thanos. And he's like, never say that name again. And then Korg's like, oh, yeah, we, we, we don't say that name here because, you know, we don't say that name. That's all. And so the the way they end up getting him to come back is funny. Is Rocket is like, we have beer. <laughs> what kind? <laughs> what kind? <laughs> and so then we lead into the next scene, which I would say this is the scene that you can go take a bathroom break. Is this scene? Which is and what that is the scene of where they are talking about all the different Infinity Stones and like no, no, no. that's not yet. Yeah, is it? No, they have to get Ronan first before they do that. Because, because, because Clint's oh, in yeah, 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 yeah. What happens right. next is them talking about the time travel thing and they make fun of all those movies, including Hot Tub Time Machine. Yep, yep. <laughs> and so then they go and they get Ronan. Ronan is killing people. I've heard we didn't like this scene. This is the um, scene I'm talking about. I didn't like this scene at all. I wasn't a huge fan of this scene. I still think it's important. I don't think you should skip it. Exactly. I uh, there's a reason why is because they tease this whole Ronin thing in the trailer so much. He's Ronin for five minutes, and then he's back to being Hawkeye again. I don't think that's true. He doesn't feel like the Ronin character throughout the rest of the movie. I think until, until 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 a certain point hits, then he feels like the Ronin character again. But after oh. they grab him, he goes back to being the comedy guy. Well, yeah, but I think I don't. I don't see. Here's the thing: Ronan in the comics is much different than Ronan in this movie. Ronan in the comics has no sense of humor. He's very blunt, very dry. Whereas this is still Hawkeye. This is just yeah. sad and depressed Hawkeye who wants to rid the world of all evil. And they happen to name him Ronan. 
I don't think they executed it very well. With this no, movie. it was very rushed. Like I said, I would enjoy the whole movie. It was very... The, the, the fight choreography was good. But, but I didn't like the directing very well. No. I, I don't, personally, I think this is the wrong time to use a long shot to go up and throughout the building. It was... Yeah. Um, just did not like it. But the scene I did like, though, was... Scarlett Johansson showing up with the umbrella because honestly, she is the worst. The reason why I believe Ronan was a lot to do with Black Widow and how much Black Widow sold this whole entire thing. Her tears in her eyes saying, You need to come home. You know, we have a plan. And he might, like, You can't give me hope. You know, please don't give me hope. And she's like, I'm sorry. It's been like, you can tell it in her face that she is, she is super sad that she is part of the reason why he is the way he is her best friend in the whole world, because she could not figure out a plan until now. And, and, I, love what and I love what she says to him, is that killing all these people is not going to bring them back. She's completely right. What he's doing is not going to bring them back. It's just going to make him feel better for like, a, for like five minutes, and then want to go do it again. Hey, just like genocide. Yeah. Way to bring that back. Um, <laughs> so then we get to... Um, one of my one of my first favorite scenes with Jeremy uh, in this movie is when he goes back in time. Uh, well, back we're gonna be heads out. No, we not. Wow. Okay. You after 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 they get Renner. Oh, yep. Renner, yep, yep. They, um, Renner says uh, that Renner says that he'll try the watch for the first time, and so they send him back. And he, when he goes back, he goes back to the farmhouse, and he hears his daughter, and he is trying so hard to see her right before he goes. And he goes, and he's like, he goes back, and his face is so genuine. It works. It, it really works. And now we get to the scene where you think that you can leave. Yes. So once after this scene, you can probably go. It's, it's basically a rehash of previous things that we have seen before. Um, they're trying to figure out the right time. Now, I I love, I love how they I love how they try to figure this out. All of us in this room, at one time or another, have had some kind of incursion with an Infinity Stone. We now have to pick the point of the best times to go get each stone. And which I really, really, I what I really enjoyed, and like I said, this is practically me, me, until I get to a certain point, I'll stop gushing about Black Widow when Black Widow you know, will get there. But <laughs> until then, I'm going to keep gushing about Black Widow at any point in time that I can say Black Widow was a part of the scene. You see my point being here? So the fact that she was so avid about writing down every tiny detail, that she didn't miss one single thing, that none of this went oh. wrong, was just, oh, when they're laying on the table. Yes, I love with, 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 with Hulk on the floor, with Tony next to Natasha, and then, and then discussing the, 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 the scepter. I was like, it feels like an Iron Man sequel with, with, with the three people I want to see in an Iron Man sequel, Black Widow, Iron Man, and Hulk. It was awesome. But the funniest scene in this, you're, 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 you okay? Yeah, bud. Um, the, the funniest scene is in, in this entire montage. And I, and this is why I don't think you should pee during it is because of the scene with Thor talking but, about the ether. No, 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 it's, it's not Thor. It's Scott's reaction. I know, like, I know what you're talking about. Great, it's not great, great oh, ether. He's so into it. <laughs> Everybody's like, maybe we should just take a little break. And he's just like, no, I'm fine. No, I'm good. I'm good. You're not. He's not. <laughs> you are not fine. You're not fine at oh. all. Oh. So then they pick the teams that go do their things. Um, so if I remember correctly, th uh, Hulk. I can tell you the exact teams. Huh? I can tell you the teams. Hulk. Ant Man, Captain America, and Iron Man go to New York to get in the scepter. Or in 2012. 2012 to go get the scepter and, and the Tesseract. Um, uh, Nebula and uh, Rhodey go back to go get the uh, Power Stone from, uh, from Korag. And then Black Widow and, uh, Hawkeye go to Nibelir to get the, which honestly I don't know why I didn't see it coming beforehand when they said the soul. Oh, I knew. And um, so those were the, so those are the teams going into the oh, and then Rocket and 
uh, Thor go back to Asgard to get the ether from Jane, which we'll get into that. So where do you want to start first with the teams? Do you want to go ahead and get New York out of the way and then lead into? Because I want to leave Black Widow for last because it's, it's, honestly, it's the most important. Oh, no, the Korag one with Nebula is more important, but the emotional beat is in the one with Nebula. No, I believe, even though for story aspect points, if we're trying to hit all the marks, I'm talking about all the big story points. Yeah, Nebula would probably be the bigger story point here just because of the whole, like, you know, final Thanos. third and things. Yeah, Thanos, I guess, is the best answer. But I would Thanos. say for heroic moments and actually being a superhero and actually for the definition of a superhero, Black Widow's moment is so much better and so much, like, higher up on the list. Um, my, my two favorite adventures in the time travel, in the time heist. I love the fact they call it time heist. My, 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 my two favorite things are the New York stuff and the Black Widow stuff. We, 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 we kind of delved into it a little bit with the Hulk. So Bruce sees himself in 2012 and he's like, well, I guess I gotta be like that guy. Rips his shirt off and is going around this, this little area going, grrr, smash. Wait, yeah. And then lifts up the motorcycle and just tosses it and goes, Grr. What I really, really love about this is that he's so used to wearing, like, full clothes. <laughs> but when he takes off his shirt, he's, he's like, I feel so naked. Or something like that. It's so leads, funny. This leads to the first cameo of the movie. And that is Miss Tilda Swinton as the Ancient One coming back. What a shock seeing her. But this makes you wonder, where was she in New York? So yeah, they bring the entire more, like, fiasco. If, where was she at? <laughs> but if we're being honest here, I love the cameo so much. I'm not gonna dive into it. My no. friend be like, okay, and, so, and so Bruce goes to talk to the ancient one to get the time stone, and they bring up some very important things about Doctor Strange in that conversation, which I thought was awesome. Um, and so then Tony, uh, Tony we also and, talk about the big thing in the room. What? Is that conversation leads to a very big conversation that leads to a very interesting char character development at the end of this movie. Yes. Um, so then we get to Tony and Ant Man getting the Tesseract from when, and this is where the, and this is where 2012 Hulk has the scene with the stairs. I'm like weight capacity, buddy. <laughs> Hulk don't like stairs. Don't want to take stairs. <laughs> and he's going down. I hate stairs. <laughs> And so then, but the best moment in the New York stuff is with Cap in the elevator. This really, if, if you're a comic fan, this scene means a lot more to you. So in order for Steve to get out of the, is, and everybody thought, they're doing Warner Soldier. They're doing Warner Soldier. It's going to be an elevator fight again. Nope. He just leans over to sit well and goes, Elytra, and gets the scepter and leaves. <laughs> Bro, a moment. Good to go. But then they lead into... The cap on cap fight. Well, I really, really enjoyed the Hail Hydra scene in particular. Not because he says Hail Hydra. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good you know shout out and things like that to Secret, um, not Secret Invade. You know, talking about the yeah. that whole storyline that I didn't particularly like in the comics, but it was still an interesting, I guess, plot device. Um, I really it liked it because it really showed how much of uh, Captain America developed from Winter Soldier alone. Whereas if he was the same character he was in Winter Soldier, he would beat them all up and grab yeah, the but now he's a strategist. He knows that he has to do this specifically in this way so that way no one knows what's going on. But then, of course, you know, when you run into yourself, there's nothing else to really you can do. <laughs> and this is a very, very cool sequence, but it also goes back to the whole time travel thing that we just mentioned before, where we're just like, if you see yourself and you poke yourself with the scepter, Shouldn't that change something about you? A little like, bit. I just feel like there's something here that they decide, no, we're not going to deal with. But it also leads to one of Steve's best lines in the movie where he's looking down at himself and going, that is America. Oh, yeah, that is a recurring joke that is going on is that he has the best ass because Iron Man's like, oh, I'm sorry, Steve. These pants do not make you have a good ass. And he's and like, so no. When he fights himself, he goes, that is America's ass. And then we <laughs> It works so well. And then we get more with, um, so we find out, you know, so this also leads into uh, stuff. So Robert Redford, fucking Robert Redford comes back. 
as Alexander Pierce and goes, we'll take the case from you. And then uh, Ant-Man is inside Tony. He's like, are you sure this is going to work? It's going to make me go and do a little bit of cardiovascular arrest. Nothing big. Nothing big. It might kill me, but I'm okay. So Ant-Man literally pulls the plug on Iron Man. They drop the case. And then all of a sudden, boom. Hulk don't like stairs. <laughs> and this was the perfect time for Loki to go and do his own show. I mean, take the Tesseract and go away. <laughs> <laughs> There's your Loki show. <laughs> Where did he go? What adventures did he go on? Oh, you'll find out. On oh, Disney Plus. <laughs> I love that. I love how he's like, thank you. It was such a good Loki moment. Like, huh? It was such a was good such a Loki, moment. Loki moment. You were just like, hmm, Because mm-hmm. Loki was the person being like, you know, surrounding the server, you know, looking yeah. at him and being like, Mm-hmm. And then, oh, and then, twenty twelve Thor has a moment like, I don't know if this is gonna work. It might work. We're gonna try it. Boom! <laughs> it worked. <laughs> I thought you were gonna die. <laughs> I love how much of of the new Thor from Chris Hemsworth is bleeding into his other Thor roles now. Like, the man's so funny. Let him work with it. So then, from then on, we we take a break from Tony and Cap for a little bit because they figure out that. You know, if they can't if they can't get the Tesseract from now, they can go back to somewhere else and get it. And I love how I mean, it's like Steve, Tony, Tony, Steve. What are you guys talking? Steve, Tony. What, what are you guys talking about? You're missing something, Zachary. What am I missing? The Hulk stuff. Oh, talking about you know taking one stone out, ripple in time. But if you put the stone back, everything's fine. That's basically it. <laughs> it doesn't matter. That's basically it. Oh, we should talk about strange. No, no, no. Let me explain it. Because okay. obviously you're not getting at what I'm trying to put down. Okay? okay. So they have the conversation before the Doctor Strange thing, which I thought was funny. It's like, is it a Martha? Is your mother's name Martha too? <laughs> <laughs> no oh. way. That's what went through my head. But either way. So they have this conversation about you have to put the stones back. You know, if you don't, then my role could be different. You know, yeah. you're 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 leading us all up to doom. This is extremely important for the third act. These lines alone change a character's whole entire fate. And you're missing over it. And I just can't believe you missed over it. Oh wait, yeah. Okay, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. And, We're not talking about the third act, so I don't really think about the third act yet. <laughs> and so he was like, so he was like, um, yeah, she, he's like, why? And he's like, because Doctor Strange, you know, gave it away. Why would he give it away? And, and her like, reaction to hearing like, that is priceless. Like, what do you mean? Like, he just gave it to him. And then that, that makes her go, he must have done it for a reason. And she's like, God, I hope you're right. We're all counting on you, Bruce. Way to put that on the Hulk. <laughs> Here you go. So then from there, now we, take we, a break. we take a break from New York and Tony and then, and then we go to Asgard, which this scene helps Thor, Thor to Dark World so much. For two reasons. A, Natalie Portman comes back. Also, I want to mention, because when we were talking about what movies you should watch and what movies you shouldn't watch, like what movies you're allowed to skip, I kept telling you, no, Zachary, for the Dark World's important. It has the ether. And you're like, they don't do anything with it. <laughs> I, you were right. <laughs> and um, so we get Natalie Portman and his mother back, which was just like, Natalie Portman? The woman who had so much not fun on the set of Thor Dark World. Like, you know what? I'll come back for this short scene. Like, thank it you. It really just, just shows how much they love the MCU as a whole and how much they want to be a part of this. The send-off letter. Because whether or not these people are in the rest of the films, they're a part of this universe. So it's important that the connective tissue is there. I really, I, I want there to be a piece on the blu when it comes out about the Russos talking about how they got each of these people to come back for their roles. I really want to know how they did it. Because it's beautiful. Because then, what, 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 why this makes Thor the Dark World so important to me now 
is the moment between Thor and his mom. Because in Thor The Dark World, he doesn't get that moment with his mom. It is a beautiful moment of him tell, of her telling her son, you know what, just because people tell you to be this one thing, you should be whatever you need to be. And please eat a salad. <laughs> I love how Rabbit's like, I got it, we gotta go. Oh yeah, Rocky goes, <laughs> he just goes bursting out. So we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. <laughs> so that's there. They leave. They, you know, they get to go home. Yeah, we, yeah they get the ether. They go. Oh no, no, no! Bigger thing with that. Important. What does Thor get there? Oh yeah, Thor also grabs Mjolnir, but which also is important to the ending of the movie. If you can't see this yet, people, the ending of this movie is important. <laughs> It is important, but it also brings up that question that we're going to bring up every time something like this happens. Of like, that was changing the past in a big way of stealing Mjolnir from a from younger Thor. Like, so when Thor holds his hand down in the dark world now, the fly, like, what comes to him? <laughs> like, it brings up so many bigger questions and smaller questions. Like, that would change something, but not according to this rose. <laughs> there isn't any because they use it as a plot device and they didn't really understand what they're doing. It's okay. I'll digress. This movie's amazing. It's still one of my favorite movies of, like, of all time. So it's okay. We'll, we'll let time travel be time travel. travel. So we move on and um, 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 I guess we'll talk about Rhodey and okay. Nebula. Yeah, let's do Okay. So I talked about Rocket and Thor. You talked about uh, ne uh, Nebula and Rhodey. Well, so I'll talk about and... everything that takes place. We'll go from Rhodey to Nebula to Hawkeye and Natasha and um, Romanoff. And I'll, I'll talk about both of those, okay? Okay. So Rhodey and Nebula are there. And so is Natasha, Natasha and... Um, Basically, they split up. Yeah, they split up. They came together. They the four of them came together, and because it was easier to go to um, right to, to twenty fourteen instead of, instead of trying to instead of Natasha and Clint trying to go to twenty eighteen to where Thor went with Thanos and Gamora went, it was easier for all, them all to go to twenty fourteen because no one been to. I wish someone had known that if they would have just went. Let me ask you a question. Without talking about the scene yet, besides. Clint and Natasha, who would you rather have gone? No, no. So here's the thing. If they would have went to 2018, if they would have went there, they couldn't have. I mean, the way they set up the movie and stuff, they couldn't have, but they would have, then they wouldn't have to. The going is take it from, you know, they had to have a little bit more manpower, you know, to do this, but they would just go have Gamora be sacrificed. Oh, boo hoo, Gamora dead. You know, it's fine. I'm over it by this and point. Get this in my life. From Thanos. And just get the stone from Thanos. Well, but, but, but what did it make it there in time? Well, okay. It made you know, it they did it the way they needed to. Because I, I, because according to movie logic, systematically going to the 2018 middle of the year would have not made any sense. Not that any of this movie math logic is logic, but okay. <laughs> anyway, way. so. But so, with your question asking of like, who would I rather? Honestly, who who did end up this whole thing, which we'll get to, which I'm gonna cry. It, I think the person who did everything that happened there, I'm very happy with who it happened with, even if I'm so tragically depressed over it. It made sense for why they did it. Like I said, I keep reiterating, certain character only had one purpose. Like she really, oh, I'm getting to it. Nebula and Rhodey. <laughs> So they're there to take it from um, Star Wars, which was really nice to see Star Wars. I oh. just recently watched the movie, and so like that was really fun. And I love how Rory's like, so he's an idiot. And she's like, yeah. But also a very important conversation to have before this is the fact that she knows that her past self is here, that Nebula is hunting for it as well. This brings up some very interesting points going forward, you know, yeah. because Thanos figures out that there's a second nebula in their solar system. I love because how they did this. I love how they did this with, with, with the two nebulas. And like, so, 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 so their core mainframe is on, is on, is on the same channel. So yep. they can use their nebula to see our nebula's memories. And I love that. That is a cool way of doing that. But we, but they, but Rhodey and uh, nebula. Oh, have, have, have a moment. Huh. You're stealing it. What? I'm talking about it. Sorry. I know you're Go excited. On. I'm also excited. So, Rhodey and Nebula 
they end up knocking out Star Wars, which was hilarious. Funny. <laughs> and Just I also really enjoyed the moment of where Nebula sticks her hand in there and pulls out the orb and hands it over and he looks down and she looks up and she's like, I wasn't always like this. And he was like, neither was I. We are like given, like we deal with what we're given or something like that. Yeah. We make what we're given with. Also, and so they, so then they start to suit up to leave. So by this point, Thanos is on his way to where they're at, which is nowhere. Is that right? Morag. Morag. Sorry, I don't know planet's names. And they're on their way there. And, well, you see, the problem with this is the simple fact that Nebula collapses because they're trying to find memories and stuff inside this other Nebula's, you know, our Nebula's head. And not the old, oh my god, this is going to be really complicated. <laughs> the other Nebula. And so Rhodey goes away. You know, he gets the, you know, they have the stone, and he goes away. Nebula is stuck here. And Which, By the way, the other thing about the scene, folks, is that Gamora's back. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Gamora. I don't know how you said that Gamora's back in, back, back in the scene now. Yeah, Gamora is here. And so. I'm badass Gamora, that. Yeah, yeah, we're back to, which I also kind of enjoy. Um, the darker and harder side of Gamora, not so much the softer side, but yeah. I did not like the comment during the third, we'll get there, the ending of the movie. I didn't really like what she said about Star Wars, but I'm jumping ahead of myself. A little bit. Huh? About, about, about an hour and a half ahead. No? About, well, yeah, actually. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. So, um... And so she goes out there to warn Natasha and wrote and um and hot you know Thanos and knows, and Hawkeye. Thanos knows. huh? What she was saying in the intercom. Thanos knows what's going on. Thanos knows what's going on. Yeah, yeah, that that Thanos knows that everybody needs to. This is a bad plan. Everybody, you know, evac, evac, you know, type thing. Everybody needs to leave. She ends up getting captured and well, um, slightly tortured, I guess. But we're jumping a little bit farther ahead. So now we're gonna move over to um. Natasha and Hawkeye. So they're on the plane and they make this really cute little joke about, you know, we're far away from, huh? About, about Budapest. Yeah, how we're far away from Budapest. And she smiles and he smiles and then they land in Van Deer. And Red Skull Man is creepy. And they, they climb the mountain. And Red Skull pops up, and is, and you know they they both hold the guns out and they say you know um, each person's fathers and mothers' names and things like that to show them that hey I know who you are and she asks Natasha's like who are you and he's like I am the Stone Keeper and she's like cool just show me where to get it you know type thing and being a badass that she is and he takes her to the cliff that is now infamous for killing Gamora. He likes girls. That's all I can say without crying. <laughs> and so he, they're sitting there and they're contemplating. Now, this is going on during other sequences, so we keep jumping back to them. That's why, you know, it's kind of, we're talking it all, like it all happening at once. It's not how it is in the actual movie. But either way, they're sitting there and um, he explains that you have to lose something that you love to be able to get the soul stone. That you have to take a soul basically to to gather the soul. It's to make it sure that you're actually worthy of the said stone or whatever. And ironically, we're sent here with Hawkeye and Natasha, who are probably the people that love each other the most in the MCU at this very moment in time that's alive, except like, you know, Pepper and like Robert Downey Jr. Don't bring them up. Don't bring all four of them up in the same set. Oh, I totally am. Do you know why? Mm. It's depressing. But, um, and so... You know, Hawkeye's like, well, he's probably lying. It's probably not true. It's probably somewhere else. And Tasha's like, I don't even know my dad's name. He knew my dad's name, which is just when, sad and depressing. It, it, when, when she said that, I'm like, oh, shit. And so they both looked at each other, and they both knew. And there's this line that's been going on is that, you know, no matter what it takes. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. And they both love each other, and they're like, whatever it takes. And they, they say these sentimental things to each other, talking about one another. And then, and then um, Hawkeye is like, 
I think we're meeting the I think we're both thinking of different people in this conversation because they both want to sacrifice sure as they both are that type of person to sacrifice one another for the other and it equals this like fighting type situation of the choreography where, and the fight between the two of them is beautiful of where they both are trying to jump and they would not let each other jump well well Hawkeye jumps, and it's this very cool sequence, and honestly, I was kind of being all happy for him jumping, I won't lie, got my hopes up, and my hopes got ruined real fast, because... Uh, shoots the grappling hook. Huh? Natasha shoots the grappling hook to catch him. Natasha shoots the grappling hook, it lands in the wall, and um, she hooks it on to Clint, to hunt, and they're hand in hand together and he's like i'll pull you up I, i'll drop you know let me drop I'll, I'll you know i can save you it can still happen i can still save you and natasha's like no you have to let me go this is this is what i need to do you know and i strongly believe it by this point you know in our story and things like this this is where she needed to be this is how she can help you know if she could help any way possible this is it this is that moment in time and so she pushes off and she falls and she dies 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 and she's dead and she's what dead. a genuine shock but i'm um, talking about tony your cap tony your cap no one mentioned this and it was like one of those things of where we don't really have many heroic moments, and we have moments of heroes doing heroic things. But we don't but have not, any. Not, but, but, but not but not a person in the MCU doing something for a heroic reason just because they know they need to. Yeah, this is like a truly selfless act that she gave from a character that was raised to be a spy that killed people, that was taken to a family that you know she wasn't even really sure that she wanted to end up having to like. I think we're paused. Hold on. You're moving, and now I'm not moving. I don't understand this life. Here, let's. Nope, still paused. Let's give it a minute. Now, how long, out of curiosity, how long have we been going? Uh, an hour and 46 minutes. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Am I just not moving? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Huh. Wondering how to fix that. <laughs> uh, let's try taking away my myself again and then we'll turn myself back on. Ah, now I'm back. Okay. And, um, yeah, I don't really know how I feel about it, to be honest with you. And she died in a very heroic way that will be remembered for the rest of the time, you know? Yeah. And I love the fact that when they do certain things, it doesn't reflect in her coming back. I love that her death meant something. Like, but when we get to that point, actually, you know what? Let's skip the New Jersey thing. Because I mean, they get they, they all we, all you guys need to know from the New, New New Jersey stuff is that they get the tesseract. That's all you need to know. Well, there, there's some pretty cool cameos that we should slightly mention. Is that oh, oh, wait, 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 there's a cameo that we need to mention? Stanley. Stanley is in this. Stanley's final cameo, cameo was in the was in was in the New Jersey thing, which my theater gave a Thoris applause for. It was awesome. And also, Howard Stark came back, which was pretty cool. And of course, one some people's favorites, we got alls. When they when Jarvis was there to open the yeah, door, Jarvis, which which is an agent, which is Agent Carter Agent Carter TV show, which I'm like, that is awesome. That and is also, representing what they need to represent. Zachary, we're missing a big part. You keep not because your mind is focused on one subject. It is you keep forgetting about the other thing. This is actually important for a Agent Carter. Oh so, yeah, Steve sees Peggy. Steve sees Peggy. That's all we're gonna say. Beautiful <laughs> moment. Just, just him staring at her. And the it, end of such a one to go in there and give her a hug. 
The end of Stucky. So after all that, they all they all get back together. Oh, there is but there's an important thing before we get back to the compound. Nebula, bad nebula, takes the orange pieces off of our nebula to go back and say that, you know, we made it, we made it. But our nebula is still on the ship, whereas uh, Thanos' daughter, Nebula, is with the Avengers. So they all get together, and um, they make the gauntlet again. They make the gauntlet. They put all the stones together, and they make the gauntlet. And this gets into my favorite Chris Hemsworth moment of the movie, is when he's like, okay, I'll do it. I'll put the, I'll put the glove on. And Tony's like, man, you're not, you're just not ready right now. And I love... Thor's face like, let me do something important. Just one thing. So I can feel like I'm doing something to fix this. I love that moment. But then Hulk goes, everybody, the, ener the energy from this thing will kill you. But it's pretty much gamma, and so it won't kill me. And so Hulk puts on the gauntlet. And so I now know what the burning on the skin means. When, when they get burned, it, it's showing how far they're going back in time to fix something or take something away. How do you know? Because um, Kalira talked about in their review, what Hulk's trying to do is go so far back in time to bring Nat back, but realizes that he can't, so he brings back who he can. And so we get like this moment of silence of like, you know, did it work? Did it work? And... I love this moment for Hawkeye. He hears his phone ringing, and who is it? It's Laura. He answers the phone and just starts to bawl. And, and then um, Bad Nebula inserts her fingers into the machine to let Thanos come through. This is already happened. And the way they did this was breathtaking. So the ship comes through, and Hulk looks up, and Hulk looks so happy, like, I did it. And all of a sudden, the blackness comes over his face. And you see Ant-Man looking outside. He's like, he sees a little butterfly flowing through the sky. Like, it worked. We did it. The compound's just getting blasted and blasted and blasted and blasted and blasted. We're getting to the things I want to talk about. Blasted, 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 blasted. And so the Avengers are split up. Uh, uh, Hawkeye is underground with the gauntlet. Oh, a lot of people are underground. Uh, Hulk, um, War Machine, and Rhodey are all together. And Ant Man's like, I can hear you guys. Do you, can you hear me? What's going on? And then we get 2014 Thanos. By the way, everybody's been wondering, why does he have the sword? Why does he have the sword? We now know why he has the sword. It's not our Thanos. And he sticks it in the ground puts his helmet there and tells Gamora to go get the gauntlet and Gamora asks Thanos, what are you going to do? I'm just going to wait. Nebula. He tells Nebula. He tells Nebula to get the, go get the stones. And, 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 uh, and, um, then Gamora and, uh, Nebula asks Thanos, what are you going to do? I'm just going to wait. And, uh, then we see Iron Man, Captain America and Thor, Walk all. We, we get the shot from the trailer, but we're freaking out about the three of them walking to him. And he's like, "Look at all what you did, and what it leads right, what it lead you to." And right it's the same to thing that he gives like every other time, so it's yeah. something new. The fight between the three, the four of them. Holy sh That eighty-five armor that Iron Man uses in this movie, fucking awesome. And seeing them go back and forth, back and forth, and as it's going, as this is going on, um, other uh, people are doing other things. Other things. But the the, the the main thing about, about about this right now is the Thor, Captain America, Iron Man, Thanos fight. So, um, Thanos has got Thor down. Like he's he's using both Stormbreaker and Mjolnir. It's just not working. And Thor drops Mjolnir, and so he's just holding Thanos back with Stormbreaker. And then all of a sudden, they pull a Force Awakens moment, and you see Mjolnir just go, I'm like, oh, it's Thor. Thor's getting me on your back. No. Boom. Whose hand does it go into? Captain America? I wasn't really shocked. Fuck. I wasn't really shocked. 
it was a callback to Age of Ultron, and I love Thor's reaction. He yeah, did it. Right. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> and then you see Captain America fucking dual wielding shield and hammer going the ding ding the ding 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 the ding 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 and then you know we're getting toward the end of the fight uh both cap not but both thor and iron man are down and thanos is just relentlessly beating on the shield just duh, duh, duh. it shatters which is a which is a callback to Than uh to tony's vision from age of ultron of sting uh caps uh shield split in half and then you know Cap stands up, looks at the shield, tightens it, and this is when Thanos brings in the army of all armies. And then all of a sudden, you hear in Cap's ear, Cap, and we have no idea who it is at this point. We have no idea. He, he, he hasn't said something yet. Cap, it's Sam. And he makes a remark from Winter Soldier on your left. And then the image of all images starts to happen. So, so how he mentioned before, there's a satisfying moment in this movie. This oh, is that moment where you're immensely satisfied. My God. You know, they made a moment where everybody thought, oh, when they bring them back, it's going to be cheap. It's not going to be worth it. Oh. So first walks out Okoye, Black Panther. We're not going to go through the whole list. There's too many they characters. All, everybody just rises and in the middle is cap he looks at everybody staring them and i love the shot of the of the two sides just staring at each other and cap says finally what he's been supposed to say avengers assemble and the battle of all goddamn battles occurs and i don't really know how to really talk about it either it's but just there's a, lot of things, it's, there's a lot of things it, happening um the A Force moment with all the ladies together, fantastic. I wait for that movie if that ever happened. Um, Pepper Potts, I was so worried about her using this armor and feeling like she didn't earn it. Seeing her with Tony in that circular shot of them views of fighting together, <laughs> seeing Evangeline Lilly kick ass as Wasp and shrinking down Captain Marvel to get her through the area, fuck cool. But the Captain Marvel moment, when you see the guns start to point up and everybody's like, what's going on? There's something coming from the stratosphere. We don't know what it is. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. Right through the ship. Not a problem. <laughs> and then they and then they call back to the Infinity War moment where Captain America has the hand in his hand and Thanos goes, oh, I'm just going to headbutt her again. Dum, nothing. Just phaser. Nothing. Just like, get, give me the gauntlet. And uh, she goes after the important van that everybody, we, we told you guys to remember the van. They, use the, they try to use the van to get the stones back, and Thanos throws his thing at it, throws at it, and then um, we get a we get a moment where I knew where, where this was going. I didn't want to think about it, but I knew where it was going. Is when Peter and Tony hugged, when Tony embraced Peter by going, "I missed you." I j also, like something else that we we're not gonna we're we're not really touching on is that everybody who was dusted knew. That they were dusted. Yes, I love that. I was so worried they come back and go, what happened? They knew exactly what happened after what, what happened. I love that. And so then, you know, Tony looks at uh, Tony looks at Stephen, and Stephen goes, and Tony goes, you told me that there was one moment where we won. Is this it? And, and, and Strange goes, and this is important. I can't tell you. Otherwise, it won't happen. So it's toward the end of the fight. And Hold on. Side note. Do you kind of slightly wish he would have told him then? <laughs> no, because the ending wouldn't have been the ending that it was. And so then Tony is fighting Thanos to get the stones, and he looks over Strange. Strange does this. Just puts the finger up. And what everybody thought was going to happen was Tony was going to get the gauntlet off of him and put it on it. No. Tony realized they don't need the gauntlet. They just need the stones. Yeah, I'm really surprised it took him very long to realize this is like that. So he which, by the way, another theory of mine is that they don't need the gauntlet. And you were like, no, they need the gauntlet. So I, I, I'm just saying. So pretty good. So then Tony puts on. Oh, wait. Before that, it leads into my moment. Thanos goes, I am the inevitable. Nothing happens. He looks down and. 
he sees there's no stones and you, you see Tony's hand morphing with the stones on him. He looks at him dead in the eye and goes, I am I am Iron Man and and then you see Thanos' army, you know, doing what they're doing. And then Thanos I love the fact that Thanos is just sitting there going, I lost. I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to scream. I'm just going to sit here and, and realize that I lost. And with yeah, away. <laughs> and with away. And then you just see him sitting there and Peter comes over and he's like, Mr. Stark, Mr. Stark, we won. We won. He's not speaking. He's just sitting there with his eyes just. And then Pepper comes over. Earlier in the movie, Pepper and Tony are talking and Pepper looks at Tony and goes, why don't you rest? Get some sleep and think about it. He's like, no, we need to do this. And so, coming back to this, Pepper looks at Tony and goes, Tony, it's done. Get some rest. And he just dies. She breaks down, and he's just laying there with his eyes open. It sucked watching it happen. But then we get probably one of the best shots of the movie after this, and that's the funeral. First off, they, they, they make a nod again to Iron Man 1 with the wreath on the water, and it has this proof that Tony Stark has a heart, which is beautiful all on its own. And then I love how they did this. I love it. Going from the Stark family with Happy in the front then just going through everybody who's been in the MCU for the past decade, just everybody together. And then the last ones, which I think is poetically perfect is Nick. And, you know, then, you know, we have the moment with happy and his daughter and happy asked the daughter, what do you want? And she's like, cheeseburgers. And happy says, you know what your dad's favorite thing was? Cheeseburgers. I'll get all the cheeseburgers you want. And I'm like, that's fucking cool. And and then we go to so I do the Tony thing, you do you do the ending. You do the ending with Steve. So after the whole thing with Tony, they have to return the stones. And they have to return the stones. And so Steve is the one who's going to return all the stones, and the way it works, because I'd, honestly, I'm not really sure how it works. Like I said, the whole time travel thing is still kind of like mucky in the waters, but somehow he can have as much time as he wants over there. It's five seconds for us. So he gets on the teleportation to return the stones. He has Mjolnir, really cool moment, and he goes, and Hulk is counting down the moments of one. Five, four, three, two, one. Going in. Five, four, three, two, one. Well, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Shh, Zachary. Shh. You can't tell me you can take this and then just come in and grab it. Come on. Be a good Sorry. sport. Be a black widow. Sorry. Jump off the cave for me, will you? Too soon. Okay, and, um, and it doesn't work. He doesn't show back up. Hulk does it again. Doesn't show back up. And he starts freaking out as one would thing. You know, maybe got lost, you know. And then Bucky, who's also in the scene, and so is um Sam. Sam, thank you. And um Bucky's like, Sam, look. And at first, what I originally thought what they were doing, they did not do this. What I originally thought is that and so he can live his life. You know, so so Steve can live his life. Here, I'll talk about what happens, and we can talk about what I originally thought. So um, they walk over, 
and you see this man, he's older, and he's sitting on the bench looking at the water. And you eventually find out that that, my friend, is Steve Rogers as a very, very old man who is getting ready to die. You can tell that he's getting ready to die. Um, it's very evident, which I was really happy about. They, you know, they weren't like, oh, he's going to be old Steve for like a few more movies. No. Um, and, you know, no one made a really big deal about the fact that he ended up living his life. I really loved the callback to where Iron Man was like talking about, you know, the whole reason why he didn't want to do the whole time travel thing is because he found his happiness, you know, and Steve never really got that. He never really got, he was never really thought he would ever be able to grow old with someone that he loved and like all this stuff. And he finally got to do that. And that's that conversation between him and Sam. They ends up getting the mantle over to Sam as Captain America, which we can talk about. We can decide if that was a smart idea. If we liked that idea, I'm, not so for it, but we can talk about it. Um, and then you see that he got married, and we get teleported back in time to 1940s. Just like I said, that's why that moment with Penny was so not not Penny, Peggy was so important because he finally gets his dance and their living room, and they get. So to this makes me think that. Instead of the ship crashing, he made it. See, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, that's what I'm assuming. Also, see, here's another thing. What I thought they were going to do originally, and the movie ends, by the way. That's the end of the movie. There's um, Also, there's been speculation that Tony is not dead, by the way. That the end of the movie, after, did you save the whole credits? No. You didn't save for the whole thing? No. I told you to save the whole thing. I, I knew there wasn't a post credit scene, so I didn't there, say. I told you there was a noise. There's a sound. Well, I knew about that. I think that's just a callback to Iron Man and him making the suit. So there's been... It's a speculation that's going around. I don't think there's anything to it, but it is a speculation. But either way, th that's the last bit. Um, I thought he was going and he changed him back. He went so far back and things to the point where he didn't take the serum. And so he, then he came back home. As a scrawny little kid, as he was no longer Captain America again. Gotcha. That's what I thought. Um, the old man Steve is a is a story. You know, it's a very beautiful story that they did in the comics. Um, so I'm very happy that they had that call. You know, I enjoyed it. Uh, I was really surprised. That's how they ended up having him go out. But ultimately, how all the characters, you know, each character that did die in this movie. They all died in a way that I felt, I never felt cheated. I never felt like, oh, no, that doesn't make sense. Iron Man sacrificing himself to save the world. That makes sense. You know, Steve going on and having the life that he needed, that, that he wanted, makes sense. Makes sense. Or, uh, we didn't talk about Thor. Thor going off and doing what he wanted to do and not being told what he needed to do. And giving Valkyrie new Asgard and him joining the Guardians of the Galaxy to go find Gamora. Which means, yeah. guys, guess what? Guardians Galaxy Nova Volume 3 is going to have four. Which, <laughs> means my, which means my anticipation of Guardians Volume 3 went up. Also, just to mention, which makes me wonder if that's the reason why they kept James Gunn, because James Gunn already knew that this was happening, and so the scripts and stuff was already written for the storyline. I'm very curious. Yeah. But also, Spider Man's storyline does end with him going on the trip to Europe. Europe. So it is not. A mysterious thing of them going on a trip like we thought. It could still be, but yeah. I don't see it going down that way anymore. Now, now, now with what we now know, I don't think it's Mysterio making up a story for Peter to go on. I, I, I genuinely think he went to Europe on a vacation. And um, so, yeah, that does debunk that. But it's so nice to talk about Spider-Man now and not be upset about it. Like, Spider-Man's coming. I'm excited about it now. <laughs> But that's why I'm like really. That's why I kind of get. There's a lot of articles that I read that people are just like mad. There's an Ed Crane sequence. They set up several movies going for it. Like Captain Marvel, I have a really strong feeling just because of some choices that Brie Larson has made as an actress and things like that for the character and her and Valkyrie. I would love for that to be an actual love thing in the movies. And there's been rumors yeah. that that's where it's going. And that's an excellent way to turn. Asgard into something is that they bring in Valkyrie for Captain Marvel 2. Like, they set up so many stories that I'm just like, I'm not like mad. We had so many post credit sequences within the last 20 minutes of the movie. 
And unlike most movies, they don't make it. Most movies that were like, okay, we're not going to get post credit sequence. We're just going to throw a whole bunch of information at you. You know, set up movies. These felt organic. they organically did it. It didn't what? feel like it was pushed on us. It was organically put into the movie where it made sense. Very, very well done. Oh, uh, the done. credits. By the way, I want to give. I want to give props where we did the credits for the movie for the ending. Oh uh, yeah. Beautiful. Seeing the six Avengers do what they did with them was just. And everybody got a mention in the credits. Everybody. <laughs> Which I figured. It was really cool. But this went on for a little bit. <laughs> well, all right. Um, I am, of course, Jacob from Jacob is Here. Like I said, it's linked above. So uh, I, am, I do some Cuban booktube videos on my main channel, which you are on. Uh, I'm Raymond from the RZ Jones 18 channel, where you'll see a bunch of toy hunts, toy collecting, video game stuff, and all of the movie and TV reactions will be coming strictly to here to Weekend Movie Bros for the remainder of time. And on this channel, because it's the second with the first podcast, and my, the videos that will be coming are um, podcasts that are going every weekend, or like live streams and stuff. They, those will be changed. Those could be during the week. But the podcast, like not live, um, will be coming out probably on Saturdays. So I think it's the date that we assumed. Um, and then we're also going to have movie trailer reactions, TV reactions, and movie reviews, and other fun TV and movie things throughout the week and on the weekend. It's going to be a very, very fun time between me and my my lovely co-host. I had a really good time talking about this movie. However, I'm excited to go to our, ne our next episode and just, you know, enjoy the movie news for the week. Um and kind of thing, yeah, yeah. It's it's gonna be nice to take a break from the Avengers for a week and just you know talk about the rest of the movie that's going on because we're now in the May within a week. We're going in right into May and we start the month off with Detective Pikachu. So let's get ready for that one. And um, I, yeah, I think that's yeah. I'm I was I was gonna add something, but I, I don't remember what I was going to add. But okay. All right, guys. Well, then we will see you next Friday. Yeah, well, no, we'll see you yeah. next Saturday. Next Saturday. Next Saturday. Um, and uh, oh, that's what it is. The next live stream will be hosted on Zachary's uh, Raymond's channel. Sorry, you're good. We'll be hosted on Raymond's channel. The first one is going to be hosted on mine. That way, we both can tell our audiences that we're going to be on. And then the third live stream for the third month. I'm assuming we'll probably do like one of these a month or something like yeah, that. Yeah, usually like once a month, but the podcasts will go up every weekend. Yeah, yeah, and it will just be like a normal podcast, except this one will be more like if you want to interact with us and stuff, just like this one, it'll be live. The other ones are gonna be pre-recorded and uploaded and things like normal. So on um, the next one will be up on his channel. So check us out over there next month at whatever date. We'll I'll put it on Twitter. By the way, if you want to follow us on Twitter? It's linked down below. Follow me on Twitter. Follow us on Twitter. <laughs> Trying to get that blue check mark, aren't you? I am. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye. Bye.